His name is Robert the Dog. Many say he has supernatural powers and can cause anyone great harm. Some people said that he was abusive towards her. And when he was confronted with his abuse, he'd say, I didn't do it, Robert. We're about to go pay Annabelle a face-to-face -face visit. I'm going to dare her to kill us. I'm not so scared. I'm not frightened of it. it. Because if you are, you would attract energy to you that really could be harmful. Hello everyone, my name is Haley Elizabeth and if you don't know who I am, I post videos pertaining conspiracy theories, controversial people, true crime, and all things spooky, scary, skeletons. So if you're into any of that, you can subscribe and if not, you might be in luck because for the whole month of October, every Friday when I post, I'm going to be doing videos talking about ghosts and scary, spooky stuff similar to what we're doing today. It's going to be a really, really fun time. So if you want to subscribe, you can. And if not, let's just hang out. Let's do some makeup. Let's have some fun. I got a new costume on, so we're gonna do a little bit of that. I literally don't think there's anything else for me to say besides that, surprisingly. But before getting into the rest of today's video, I do want to thank Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Now, Scentbird is one of our best friends on this channel, but if you're new to my channel and you don't know what Scentbird is, Scentbird is a monthly subscription fragrance service that offers over 600 brands, ranging from high-end like Google Gucci, Versace, and Prada to more indie brands like The Harmonist and Confessions of a Rebel. Fragrances are unisex as well as working directly with the brand so you know what you're getting is 100% authentic. And within each bottle is a 30-day supply, so not only do you know that you're getting the best for your money, but you also get a chance to try out the fragrance before committing to the full bottle. This month, I tried out the fragrances Dirty Vanilla by Heretic, Willow Woods by Skylar Clean Beauty, Pink Sugar by Pink Sugar, Amazing Grace by Bergamot, Bergamot, Ber and Get a Room by Confessions of a Rebel. My personal favorite is the Pink Sugar by Pink Sugar because this is literally smells like pink sugar. It makes me feel like, you know, I'm like a mean girl in an early 2000s movie and if you're ever looking for something to boost your ego, this one will 100% do that for you. Although this one is my favorite, that does not mean that I don't like the rest of the fragrances. The rest of the fragrances smell just as good, and I'm so, so happy I was able to try out all of these fragrances before breaking my bank first. Their product is actually eight times larger than your standard samples, which like is so incredible. You are definitely getting your money's worth. Semperd has fragrances like the Harmonist that usually cost around $295. $290 $295 for a fragrance? No. I no. Don't do that. I'm telling you right now, don't spend almost $300 for a fragrance. And it would also be worse if you spent $300 on a fragrance and then you ended up not liking that fragrance. Semperd is actually hooking all of you guys up with a deal because they love you so very much. So before you hop on and start looking at your next Semperd purchase, make sure to click the link down in the description and use my code Haley for 30% off your next purchase. Super, super easy. All you do is go to the website and you take a short quiz about your preferences and Semperd will give you a list of suggestions so you physically pick out which ones you want so no surprises. Again if you click the link in the description and use my code Haley you will get 30% off your next purchase of Scentbird and thank you so much to Semperd for sponsoring this video. I absolutely love when you guys sponsor me. Mwah. Okay back to the video. All right so without further ado let's just get into it. The very first story that we're going to start off with is Robert the doll, just because I feel like this one is so much crazier. If you guys are familiar with the movie Chucky, uh, Chucky is basically a movie talking about a young boy that receives a doll, and at first the doll is just like a normal doll, until later on it starts showing signs of like homicidal tendencies and like kills a bunch of people. Well, this Chucky movie was actually inspired 
by Robert the Doll, the real Chucky people call him. Back in the early 1900s, there was this family called the Odo family, and they had a 10 year old son named Eugene. The Odo family was kind of rich, and they had a big like plantation that they had a bunch of servants working on. And one of the servants actually gifted Eugene this doll. When he received this doll, he decided to name him Robert. And quickly after he received the doll, weirdly enough, he started to become very, very attached to the doll, but not in a big like red flagish way. The parents just thought that maybe this was his favorite doll. So for example, he would bring Robert to the dinner table and like fake feed Robert. He would always bring Robert to school. He would play with him all the time. He would talk to Robert as if Robert was an actual person. Again, the parents just thought like, oh, this is just what kids do, like with their favorite dolls. I remember when I was little, I had an American Girl doll named Molly, and I took that girl literally everywhere. I, I actually don't know what happened to her though suspicious she probably took off to canada and started a rock band and has like two kids as she should though but anyway as scary as he looks even is scarier in person because robert is not just like a little dolly doll he is a three foot life-size doll that is dressed in a huge sailor's costume and attached to him is a lion stuffed animal as i said like this is in the early 1900s so it really like it looks creepy now but back then that was just like how dolls looked so the parents just thought like oh this is normal he's just bringing his doll all over the place it's really not that big of a deal until it started to get a little bit weird family didn't realize until as robert got older like you know 12 and 13 he still was very very attached to this doll and did not want to let him go he bathed with the doll he fed the doll he talked to the doll he like did everything with this doll and the parents just kind of assumed that he would grow out of it but again he was like 13 and this still just wasn't going away and then matters started to get not worse but just a lot weirder parents say that they would walk past eugene's bedroom and hear talking like eugene was talking to the doll which again really wasn't like that crazy of a thing when eugene would talk to robert there has been multiple occasions where they would hear a voice reply back and at first the parents thought that maybe robert was making up a voice for the doll it wasn't until one day the father peeked into the room and heard this mysterious voice but did not see Eugene's mouth moving and then he also realized that this voice that would reply had so much bass and like such a deep voice something that his 13 year old son could not just do on his own so the father was like okay this is getting a little bit too out of hand like this is kind of getting scary basically eugene as i said would do everything with robert so he would also sleep with robert as well and one night the father told eugene you can't sleep with that doll if you sleep with the doll then you're gonna get like him dirty and stuff but in reality the father was just trying to sell separate his son from the doll like little by little to hopefully just throw the doll away altogether. And that night Eugene sleeps in his bed and in the corner of his room is a chair and on the chair is sitting Robert and Robert is looking straight at Eugene. Parents go to sleep and then all of a sudden in the middle of the night around like 4 a.m. they hear Eugene screaming and crying and when they walk into the room they see furniture thrown all around the room all of his stuff was thrown all over the place and Robert coincidentally was just sitting in the corner of the room completely intact. The parents see this and they know for a fact that it was not Eugene that had done this. This was very very odd and it was also very very scary for the family. For some reason the family just didn't do anything about it. They just thought that like it was weird or something. It wasn't until crazy things started happening. Various scratches would show up on the wall or things would be broken and when asked about this Eugene would always blame it on on Robert. But things just started happening way, way too much. They started realizing that not only was Eugene very attached to Robert, he was also blaming 
all of his mistakes onto Robert as well. So they decided enough's enough. We have to stop tiptoeing around this and hoping that it gets better. We just need to take the doll away from Eugene. So they take the doll away from Eugene and place Robert upstairs in the attic where Eugene cannot see Robert, but also Robert, if he is possessed or something, cannot bother the family anymore. Well, Robert, being the girl boss that he is, he had other plans. So since Robert was in the attic, frequently they would hear a lot of commotion going on in the attic, even though no one was up there. Whenever guests were over and spending the night, the guests would complain of screaming and pounding, loud, heavy footsteps in the attic with, again, no one was in the attic. So even though Robert was kind of away from the family, he was still taunting the family as much as he could. And it really did affect the family greatly because this time everyone just thought that, oh my God, like there's someone living in that family's attic. Like that's terrifying. And also the neighbors would frequently say that they had seen or would see Robert move in the attic window, walking around. Going back to the Chucky movie, if you've never seen the Chucky movie, basically in that movie, the reason why Chucky becomes possessed in the first place and starts killing people is because he was a voodoo doll and there was like a demonic seance put onto him that made him the way that he was. People just thought that this was lazy storytelling or like that was a boring way of introducing the origin story of Chucky, but this was real. Robert the Doll was based on the Chucky movie. Word started to get around that this was happening to the family and it was made aware the Odo family actually had a plantation where they had a bunch of servants working for them. Well, it was said that the mother of the family did not treat her servants well whatsoever and one day uncovered one of her servants doing black magic. Now, who really knows if the woman was actually doing black magic? Like that's just what she said. After that, she ended up firing her. After she fired her as a like parting gift, she gave the gift of Robert. A lot of people were speculating that possibly the woman had done voodoo on the doll prior to giving it to the family, kind of as revenge, which girl boss, to bring ill will to the family. People started to find out about these crazy happenings. The Odo family was kind of decreasing in their social status. Social status was literally everything. And so a lot of people just didn't want to be associated with them anymore. It's so crazy because like people weren't even mad at the fact that like she treated her servants badly. It was more of like, oh, you let your servants do voodoo? That's weird and like anyway the inevitable happened and the family just wasn't really doing well financially or socially as time went on it did eventually get better such as Eugene Eugene started kind of swaying himself away from Robert and started to really realize like hey maybe I don't need Robert as much as I used to the family hearing this news just kind of assumed oh yeah well of course you don't need Robert because you're using Robert as a safety blanket Eugene grew up and ended up getting married and getting a place of his own. The parents still stayed in that same house and not only did they stay in that same house, Robert was still locked in the attic. They had never taken Robert out of the attic after like many, many years ago when Eugene was just a 10 year old boy. In around like the late 1920s to early 1930s where the father had unfortunately passed away and as Eugene's inheritance, he inherited the household. He got the keys the house just got married so he was already looking to settle down it was just perfect timing for him the mother did not live there i'm not sure if the mother at this point was already dead or if she just didn't live there for some reason i couldn't really get like a direct answer but she did not live here eugene at this point was actually like a pretty successful artist so he was able to take care of all of the servants and the plantation and all of like the monthly bills because this was a pretty big house and kind of an expensive one to keep up with. When Eugene moved into the house with his wife, he, you know, was settling down and then he goes up to the attic 
and that's where he discovers Robert. Eugene, for some reason, just didn't really feel any fear around Robert. He didn't really feel like Robert was bad, and so he brought it downstairs, and he was like, hey, honey, look what I got. And she's like, oh my god, <laughs> what is that? And he's like, it's my doll. I, I got this when I was like a young boy at like 10 years old, and I didn't even realize he's still upstairs. Isn't that crazy? And she's like, wow, um, can you like put it back upstairs maybe? He's like, no, he's not going back in the attic. And so then that is when Robert ended up being a part of the family. And immediately, as you know, you probably could tell by my amazing theatrical performance, that the wife was not really into Robert. She thought that he was very creepy looking. She didn't really have like a good feeling when around the doll. And not only was it creepy looking, it was also like three feet tall. So that's also really messed up. A few months go by and Eugene slowly starts to transform into that 10 year old Eugene again. He would become very, very obsessed with the doll. He would bring the doll everywhere. He would feed the doll. He would like bring the doll to work. Whenever he would have to do paintings or murals or anything like that, he would bring Robert along and just sit Robert down and have like Robert watch him. He just became so, so obsessed over the doll once again. And of course, this freaked out his wife. She felt that, you know, his connection to the doll was not like a nostalgic, oh, this is my childhood toy. It was something a lot more serious than that. I didn't even mention this but the wife her name was Anne and Anne used to like say stories of how she would be walking around the house and then all of a sudden she would hear like a giggle come from another room like a creepy child's giggle and then she would walk in the room and Robert would be sitting somewhere in that room so that was another thing that was like really scary and tripped and out she would like what did I just marry? And it got so bad till one day Eugene asked his wife like, hey, can Robert sleep in the bed with us? And she's like, no, you know, like, why? Why would we do that? And so he's like, yeah, you're right. Um, can he like sleep in the room though? Because he told me that like he really wants to like sleep with us. And she's like, uh, okay he can like sit on the chair or something but he's not coming into the bed with us <laughs> he's he wasn't like this but i could you know visualize that he was probably like oh cool cool okay robert you you got you got the chair and that's actually where robert would sleep most nights this was not just like a one-time thing robert would sit down in his chair and basically just watch as the couple slept ever since robert started sleeping in the bedroom the wife actually ended up getting extremely bad night terrors about nothing like specific they were just kind of all different she would wake up frequently in the middle of the night like screaming for some reason the first thing she would look at was robert staring at her so it just made her even more creeped out about the doll this doll is not staying in here like i'm already having night terrors and he's just kind of making it worse by being there so because of robert eugene and Anne's relationship really started to crumble and it was mostly because of robert he was just so so obsessed over robert and he was getting in the middle of everything that they did in life as i said he he would bring Robert everywhere. So every time they wanted to like go on a date or like just go out anywhere, he would always have to bring Robert as if like that was his child. And this made Anne, you know, very, very frustrated. But then it also made Eugene very frustrated. Why don't you like Robert? Like he's a doll. Like you, he could come with us if you want. Like kids bring dolls everywhere all the time. And it's like, you're 32, like you're not, you're not a kid. The more and more Robert stayed in the family, the worse and worse their relationship got. It even got so bad to the point where Eugene actually started to get uncontrollable mood swings. So one second Eugene would be extremely happy and then the next second he would be extremely mad and throwing things and then the next he would be like crying and apologizing. This was very, very bizarre of Eugene. The wife had 
had never seen anything like this before not coming from her husband eugene started to be physically abusive to anne and would hit her very often so when he would be in his like rages he would tend to get very physical with her and hit her there really wasn't much to do because this was during like the 1950s where divorce was pretty much not an option. It's not as regular as it is now. It's more of like, oh, you just gave up on your marriage. Like divorce wasn't even on the table for them. So she basically just had to sit there for the rest of their life together. Now, eventually in 1974, Eugene had passed away and the house went up for sale. When the house did go up for sale, Robert was still inside because nobody really knew knew about the story of Robert, only neighbors and a few family members. So that's how the story was able to be passed on for so many years. In 1976, this new family moves into the house and this 10 year old girl discovers Robert and the same exact thing happened to her as when it happened to Eugene. She became very, very obsessed with the doll and not in a way of like, this is just my favorite toy kind of obsessed. Again, she would bathe with it she would feed it she would take it everywhere she went and it lingered on until she was older but this family actually when all of this behavior started to you know get a little crazy this was also during like the 1970s into 80s where the whole satanic panic was going on it was like a rise in cults and cult-like behavior so everybody was on edge when it came to demons and anything satanic the parents would walk past the room and hear a very deep voice reply to when the little girl would talk to Robert. Robert would throw things around, like in the middle of the night, she would just start screaming and then they would walk in, see Robert sitting in the corner, but like stuff was thrown all over the place. So this family in particular, they did not play. They were like, yeah, no, this is not something we're gonna do. They ended up taking Robert to a priest. And when the priest had blessed Robert, they brought Robert back to the family family, but unfortunately that did not work. They tried the whole attic situation again and that did not work. So they thought the only way to actually get rid of the doll is if they were to give it to someone that can like either display it or demolish it. Uh, given to the Fort East Mortello Museum in Key West, Florida. And that is currently even where like to this day Robert resides. He stays in a glass box all by himself in the bottom basement. A lot of people have a lot of stories about Robert and their experiences when going down into the basement to look at him. People, you know, like they just wanna go in there, be stupid and start making jokes or start banging on the glass. But if you go to his actual box, around the box are a bunch of letters and those are actually letters from people that are basically begging Robert for forgiveness. There have been a lot of people that show up there and bring peace offerings to Robert, such as like food, candy, books, money, whatever. They just go over there and they bring a peace offering. They bring an apology letter. That's currently where Robert resides now. Um, he's still there to this day. Like if you want to go visit him, you can. And even to this day, this man is like now 110 years old, I think. And this man is still like, playing his games because he sits, as I said, in a glass box, but there has been many, many reports of workers there as well as like people who have physically seen Robert move in his box, which is something that like not a draft or something like you're in a glass box. Like there's no such thing as a draft coming by and that's why he fell over. Moral of the story, you cannot, you cannot hold Mr. Robert down. Like he is, he's gonna continue this until the day someone like does something to him i don't know so yeah that is the story of robert the doll the doll that inspired chucky i feel like it's a really interesting story if you're new to my channel basically when i do these type of videos where i talk about more than one story i do a quick little intermission because i feel like sometimes the stories are a little dark or a little spooky and some people need that break to relax a little bit breathe like really soak in what we just spoke about before we hop into the next story so it's kind of like a smooth transition i don't want to tell you what i'm gonna be 
I don't want to tell you what I mean you could probably tell So I got new stuff for my bed I don't even know if you could see that um, it's this blanket and then there's this pillow it's a deer with a suit and I love him with all my heart I got rid of all my squishmallows I got rid of all my squishmallows I'm sorry I only kept a few and they're laying over there I kept um, only my expensive ones. I just feel like they were taking up way too much space on my bed and then having to put them on my bed every morning was like just such an extra step. Okay, so I think we're calm now, all right? Did you take a breather? Did you drink some water? Just wanna, just wanna make sure that you're okay before we hop into this next um, traumatizingly scary story. <laughs> you probably have heard of the doll Annabelle. She's become one of like the biggest haunted doll figures in the movie scene because there's been the movie Annabelle and it was also a continuation of the Conjuring series. So you probably heard of Annabelle through that franchise but a lot of people may or may not know is that that Annabelle movie was in fact based on a true story and it was based on a real doll named Named Annabelle. The Annabelle in the movie and the Annabelle in real life does not, you know, even look similar in any sort of aspect. I understand that like the movie needed to change Annabelle to make her look like super creepy and weird, but the original Annabelle looks just as creepy. She looks just as terrifying. Like, I don't know why they had to make her look super like demented and crackled. Like literally just use the other one and it's the same exact effect. Like I'd be just as scared. So basically the whole origin story behind Annabelle is that, oh, hold on. <laughs> Girl, let me not call Mars right now. Anyway, in 1952, there was this company called Nesper, or also known as the New England Society for Psychic Research. And this was a company made by Ed and Lorraine Warren, where basically their main focus was to go to various hauntings and basically try to bless it, exercise it, just get rid of as much dark energy in this world as they can. And that was their main focus. This company, Nesper, is pretty well known in the movie industry. Uh, this company that like from the hauntings that they've went to, they have actually inspired many, many horror movies such as The Conjuring, The Haunting in Connecticut, and The Amityville Horror House. And so this was like a pretty big company. Moving forward, that is the company that we're talking about. I felt like it was necessary to let you in on short history of this place because it does kind of play a role later on. In 1970, there was this woman who was a 28 year old nursing student named Donna. And for her 28th birthday, her mother Mother had actually gifted her a Raggedy Ann doll and a lot of people think that this was pretty odd for the mother to gift her child but I actually read that Donna was a really big collector of vintage items loved vintage like dolls and decorations and antiques and Donna ended up really really liking this to the point where she brought the doll home and she would set the doll on her bed every single night until not that short after bringing the doll into their home they started to see some weird happenings with the doll. Donna had a roommate named Angie and Donna and Angie would quite frequently see the doll moving. When they would both come home from work, they would look at the doll and she'd be on the opposite side of the bed or she would be laying down or even all together just be in a completely different room. Like for example, they could put the Raggedy Ann doll on the couch and then come home and then she'd be back on Donna's bed. And these situations could easily be pawned off as either paranoia or forgetting, oh, I thought I put her here, but I actually put her on the bed, or maybe she just fell over naturally. They didn't really think it was like demonic or anything until one day their friend Lou came over to visit. And this is the first time that Lou had actually met the doll. And immediately when he met the doll, he just told Angie and Donna straight up, like, you need to get that doll out of this house. Like, I don't know what's going on with that doll, but that doll is is such bad energy like as soon <laughs> as soon as I walked in here I was attacked by Monica at the circulation desk so he just said like guys you need to get that doll out of here like I don't I, there, there's just something going on with it and then Angie and Donna are like Lou stop being dramatic like it's really not that big of a deal later on after Lou had left Donna and Angie would find various notes around the house written on parchment paper that said things like help me or help 
blue and it looked like it was written in children's handwriting whoever found it like for example if angie found it she would just think oh you know donna's pulling a joke on me this isn't funny and then same thing with donna donna would find it and she would think angie was doing it and it wasn't until one day donna had laid the raggedy ann doll on her bed but then when she came home the raggedy ann doll was on the couch and staring right at the door so when donna walked in like the doll was staring right at her and she looked at the doll and she noticed that there was a little bit of like dirt or something on the doll so when she went to go get a closer look that's when she realized it was not dirt but instead blood blood on annabelle's hands and chest and at that point you know she showed angie and her and angie collectively decided yes i think it's about time that we need to get a medium in here at first they just call a medium in to basically cleanse the area and you know get any of their questions answered of what's exactly going on in here at this seance it actually revealed um the presence of what was living in the raggedy ann doll and what it revealed was that there was this little 10 year old girl named annabelle that actually died on the property a few years ago and she became very attached to this doll. The medium had said that Annabelle actually felt very at home with Donna and Angie and Donna and Angie made her feel very loved and that she didn't want to leave the Raggy Ann doll body. Now Donna having the big heart that she does she thus feels bad for this little girl. She's like oh my god okay well I can't really you know let her go now. She's in a bad place and we make her feel so happy what actually is the harm if she just were to stay here? Donna actually invites Annabelle into attaching herself to the doll so that she could stay for as long as she wants. This was a really, really bad move. So then shortly after this seance, Donna and Angie thought that things would get better because, you know, they finally have this deep connection with Annabelle. They know where she's coming from. They know like who she is, how old she is. They kind of felt more comfortable living with Annabelle because now there was no fear of the what ifs. But but unfortunately, when the seance did end, things did not get better at all. Um, things actually got 10 times worse, such as things being thrown, broken, Annabelle in like completely different rooms. They would try to look for something like, for example, if Donna was looking for her purse, she'd look all around the living room, go to her bedroom, come back in the living room, and it would just be sitting on the couch. So things just started to like get a lot worse, which really sucked for Donna and Annabelle because they thought that this was probably going to be like a good thing for them. With this, Donna just felt like very bad for Angie and just like everyone involved because she did kind of feel it was her fault, you know? Like she's the one who brought this doll into this place and now it's harming everyone. Donna felt extremely bad. She also felt extremely responsible for all of this. So she needed a little getaway. So she contacted Lou. Remember Lou? She was was like Lou we need to go on a road trip we need to go somewhere I just need to get out of here and like go have fun because I've been so stressed with this whole doll situation and I don't really know what to do so Lou comes over and he spends the night because they plan on like leaving early next morning so Lou comes over he spends the night he sleeps on the couch and next morning Lou wakes up and explains Angie this story of what happened to him in the middle of the night he said that he randomly woke up and when he did he felt like he was in a state of paralysis and could not move his body he couldn't move his head to look around but what he did see was Annabelle staying at his feet and slowly creeping up towards his face and choking him to the point where he passed out and when he passed out he woke up and he was back on the couch again a lot of people could just say this was probably a nightmare of Lou's because as I said like Lou was already sort of scared of Annabelle and like spending the night in the same place as her 
is going to be a little bit scary. So personally, I don't know, maybe he just had sleep paralysis, maybe it was just a bad dream, but later on that morning when they were about to leave, when she put Annabelle on top of her bed, she shut her door to leave and then as soon as she shut her door, her and Lou heard a bunch of like rustling sounds coming from her bedroom. Heavy footsteps rustling around like things are just, you know, going up. Now what is this? Now what exactly is that? And they obviously started freaking out of like, oh my God, who's in the house? So once it all started to die down a little bit, Lou went up to the door and opened it. Absolutely nothing was touched. Not a single thing was moved. And the only thing that was moved was Annabelle. And she went from the bed to the floor. But it was just so bizarre because they had heard all this commotion as if things were being thrown around. Stuff was like going down in there, but then they look inside and nothing, not a single thing had been touched. He sees Annabelle on the floor and obviously Lou at this point is at his breaking. He's like, that's it, like this doll needs to go. So he walks up to the doll and as he's about to pick up Annabelle, he leans over and starts groaning in pain because he feels this very sharp pain coming from his stomach. And when he looks down at his shirt and he sees his shirt like blood soaked, he's like, oh my God, what's happening? What's happening? He lifts up his shirt to reveal three scratches across his stomach. So immediately they get up out of there. Like who is going to stay there? He said that these scratches were pretty deep cuts, like something you would get from a knife or something. Like it was just so bizarre. And Lou said that it was not just simply something that like could have been, you know, uh, left undone. Like maybe he accidentally scratched himself in his sleep or he banged his stomach against something. Like, no, these were deep cuts. And the crazy part is that for as like deep of cuts as they were they ended up going away in just two days just completely healing angie and donna are still freaking out because they thought this situation was over with when they had the medium come in so they ended up getting extra help and decided to call in a priest to get a proper cleansing of the house that is when they called the company that i mentioned mentioned earlier nesper they called up ed and Lorraine rain they were like hey guys something's something's a boiling it up in here and I, I don't really know what to do like they uh, we had a seance with this one medium and it, it said that like it was a 10 year old girl but I don't think it's a 10 year old girl anymore like I think it's something more because it scratched my friend blah, 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 blah. so Ed and Lorraine are like girl shut up we'll be over there and so then they do yet again another seance trying to contact whoever was in the Annabelle doll and so that is when Ed and Lorraine reveal to Donna and Angie that this was in fact not a 10 year old girl, but instead a demonic entity that was possessing the looks of a 10 year old girl because they knew that Donna, once she found out that this was just like a little girl that needed love, that she would then, you know, grant the demon access into the body. And that was exactly of what happened. When speaking more with this demonic entity that was possessing the Annabelle doll, they got the message that whatever was in the Annabelle doll was actually using the Annabelle doll as an outlet in order to hurt people and also find its first human host. And it was just weeks away from completing its journey. In the next few weeks, it could have been Donna, Angie, or Lou that probably could have died if this wasn't, you know, taken care of when it was taken care of. This son, love you, but can you come out fully? Fix the lighting, so that should look like 10 times better. After they're receiving all this information from Annabelle, uh, Donna just ends up, you know, breaking down and crying. She starts freaking out because, you know, like she does truly feel like this is her fault. Even when she heard that one of them could have died because of this, it just sent her into a complete panic. And so then Ed and Lorraine felt really bad for Donna and was like, it's not your fault. Like demons are, <laughs> demons are gonna demon, you know, like it's, it's fine. Ed and Lorraine are like, you know what, Donna, we're gonna take care of you 
it's gonna be fine. We'll just take Annabelle back to our place out of safety for all of you guys because you know, like it seems like this demonic entity really wants your guys' body. And since you aren't really experienced in this field too much, they might be successful because you won't know how to defend yourself. So Ed and Lorraine being the king and queen that they are, they were like, hey yo, we'll just take her back with us. And Donna and Angie are like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah, we'll just take her home with us. It's gonna be fine. And then Lorraine end up taking Annabelle back to their house while the priest stays there and does a complete cleansing and blessing of the house to ensure that all the bad energy that was like lingering still from Annabelle was out of there. And and Lorraine say that on the way home, they actually experienced a few difficulties with their car. With Annabelle in the back seat, they said that like various times the car would just steer randomly randomly as well as the brakes giving out very very often so every time that would happen Ed and Lorraine would kind of like you know go back and like bless her real quick or like spray holy water on her just so they could make the drive home and not only did that happen on the drive home but the haunting got even worse when Annabelle was brought into Ed and Lorraine's house Ed actually tells a story of how this one time he saw Annabelle completely levitate from his office chair before slamming down back on the chair again. There had been many times where they would like hear giggles from rooms that Annabelle was in and then there would be no one in there. To help this situation, they brought in their own priest to, you know, figure out what was going on with Annabelle. And that is when the priest actually picked up Annabelle and swung her by her little arms and said to her face, you're nothing but a rag doll, Annabelle. You can't hurt anyone and slammed her back on the chair. And obviously Ed and Lorraine were like, uh, okay, well, I, I didn't, I didn't think you were gonna do all that. I thought you were gonna like, you know, <laughs> I thought you were gonna like say grace or something. <laughs> I didn't think you were gonna like do all that. And so they warned the priest like, hey, um, make sure to be careful on the way home because that, that what you did was not good. And so the priest is like, whatever, I'm a girl boss, like I can do what I want. And so then he goes home, coincidentally, he, his brakes just randomly go out in the middle of an intersection and he crashes his car and thank God he survived, but his car was actually totaled. And even the priest like later on confirmed that like, yes, I do believe it was because of Annabelle. Like there was something demonic in her and I thought that if I showed no fear, it would all be good. So since Annabelle was still haunting, they really just didn't have much of a choice. So in Instead of keeping it at the house, they instead decided to display her at their museum because they had a museum full of like haunted items. So they brought Annabelle into the museum, but then just kept her in a glass case so she couldn't actually like touch or try to like manipulate anything as well as a cross sitting right above her. At the Warren Occult Museum, that is still to this day where she stays. There has been many tours of that museum and a lot of people have like very crazy stories of seeing Annabelle. Some people say that they have seen Annabelle move in that box. There was another story where there was this guy that went with his girlfriend and he started like teasing Annabelle, like banging on the glass, calling her names and calling her fake. Ed was there and he was like, you can't do that. And he's like, oh, watch me. You're, you're stupid, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, okay, well you need to get out because like, that's not what we're gonna do. And he leaves with his girlfriend. They hop on his motorcycle. And as they're driving on the way home, all of the sudden the guy randomly loses control of his motorcycle and crashes into a tree and dies. Um, now the girlfriend, thank God, was okay, but she did have to recover in a hospital for like an entire year. The girlfriend today says that it was due to the Annabelle doll because right before the crash, they were laughing about the Annabelle doll. And so she truly does feel like she lost her boyfriend to that Annabelle doll. There was actually this rumor going around in like early 2020 that that she left and oh my god like the memes of it was so so funny I see it on my feet Annabelle hello I'm out swell I swear I Stop swear playing. they could they could catch me oh, they <laughs> catch me <laughs> They can't catch me! Oh I my just, god! I just, Breathe, Anna! I just ran! <laughs> 
They had me locked up in that box. I was sitting so quiet. I was like, huh? just quiet, just mute. mute. <laughs> and when they used to spend it, I said, boom. <laughs> A lot of people thought that she left or that she escaped when in reality she did not escape. Okay, so Ed and Lorraine, a while ago they had passed away and who like inherited this entire place was their son-in-law, Tony Sepra. And Tony Sepra made a video of like Annabelle in her box and being like, guys, she's still in here. Like if she would have left, I would have known. Like I have security cameras and stuff all over this place. She actually never left. That was just a rumor, but oh my God, what is it? The funniest rumor ever. As for the actual museum today they have been shut down since 2019 so you can't actually go there and go to tours anymore unless you know your buzzfeed and solved the reason why they shut down was not due to like anything scary or demonic it was more of zoning issues so basically the warren museum wasn't like a huge museum it was more just like of a small house and because of all of this like uproar of the annabelle doll all these horror movies that were coming from the warren family they started to get a lot more traction to their museum but since this was just like a house it really wasn't made for like a lot of parking to the point where the neighbors had to park down the street just to get to their house so that's why they shut down um will they relocate in the future i don't know i don't think so because the tony sepra he still posts videos of there and it seems like they're not really going anywhere so I don't know, maybe one day. That is the story of Robert the Doll and Annabelle. Um, if you can't tell who I am, I am Annabelle. You can see my hair. How do I even, like that? Oh girl, why didn't I just do that like six years ago? I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. And if you wanna follow me on any of my socials, like Instagram, that will be linked down below, as well as my PO box if you want to send me anything. I am Annabelle. Okay, in my defense, this wig looked a lot more red on Amazon than it does in real life, okay? I don't know. I kind of look like Hannah Montana if she um, wasn't Hannah Montana. Okay. I always thought that I would look good with this type of hair, like Dove Cameron, Billie Eilish sort of hair, but now I'm starting to realize I would not look good in this hair. I don't like it at all. I feel like I look a lot better with darker hair. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And it was kind of scary to like look up because I was looking at all these spooky stories of Annabelle and Robert, especially Robert. So I don't know why I'm whispering. There had been a lot of stories where like, even if you say his name, like it's bad luck or something, which that is a risk I'm willing to take for y'all. So he sage it up so much that my room is just smoke. Like you can't even see my room anymore. That's how much I'm gonna cleanse this room when I'm done. I said in my last video that I was gonna like say a ghost story at the end of each video. Here's my ghost story. So my house is a little haunty haunted. This happened like three years ago, I would say. In the middle of the night, I'm sleeping in my bed and then all of a sudden I wake up, but then I go back to sleep. So I'm like half awake, half sleeping. And then all of a sudden I hear a big bang and I jump up up and I look around my room and I can't see anything because it's dark. So I'm just thinking in my head like, okay, Haley, there probably wasn't even a bang, you know, like when you're about to go to sleep and you're falling off a cliff and then you wake up before you hit the ground. I was kind of thinking like that. Okay, it's probably nothing. I turn over, I go back to sleep. I wake up the next morning. So now there's light in my room and I look around my room and I see that my clock is off of its wall and the clock side is facing down and so i'm like oh did my clock fall off the wall last night so i get up i go over to my clock and i lift it up so i'm looking at the clock now and it was 3 a.m on the dot it was 3 a.m on the dot and the reason why the time like had stopped is because i looked on the ground and the batteries had flown out of the clock and so when the batteries came out the time obviously stopped and like the way that my clock is set up to i'll show you this is the clock right here basically Hi guys. That clock is connected on the wall by a hook. So this is the hook that's on the clock. This is the hook that's on the wall and it connects like that. So this is the hook, hook connects like that, like that, you know, like a link. So there is no way that the clock can just fall off of the wall because in order for it to fall off the wall, it would have to completely unlatch from the hook and then fall. 
Like there is no way it's just gonna like, it can't just fall off. My camera's gonna die, but thank God, because I need to hurry this up. And then I showed my mom and my mom was like, it's probably because you're on that phone too much. <laughs> my mom was kind of freaked out. My sister was kind of freaked out and I was kind of freaked out. But then at the end of the night, as I said last video, I tend to joke with the ghosts in my house. So before I went to sleep that night, I would like, now y'all better not mess with my clock because I need to tell the time. Like I can't be late to school tomorrow. And then the next day, like nothing happened. So yeah, that's the, that's the spooky, scary ghost story. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. I genuinely really, really love Scentbird and I'm so excited when they do sponsor my videos. So I bought ribbon. I bought red ribbon for these braids. All these wigs on Amazon, first of all, Amazon wigs, can we not ever spend that much money on something we're only gonna wear once? So I bought this ribbon to get this and this was only like $16, I think. That's all I need to say. So without further ado, do something that makes you happy today.